A flight from London to New York usually takes seven hours. But what if I told you there was an airline company that could undertake the same journey in a little over two hours? Crazy, right? Well, unfortunately, the company went out of business in 2003. And here we are, spending one third of our day traveling. So, the big question is, how did a company that raked in 30 to 50 million pounds in profits yearly while making everyone's life better go out of business? In this video, we're going to be revealing how one of the biggest airline companies in the world lost all its customers and shut down. But before we continue, make sure you're subscribed to this channel by tapping the subscribe button. All set? Let's go. Concord was a fleet of supersonic passenger jets owned by the French company Aerospeciale and British Aircraft Corporation. It could go at speeds twice the speed of sound and accommodate up to 128 passengers. It was so fast it wasn't allowed to pass over residential cities and had to use only ocean crossing routes to avoid sonic boom disturbance. Manufactured in 1965, the fleet began operating fully in 1976. Production cost was a steep $160 million per unit in today's money, and the maintenance cost ran into the millions as well. But the managing corporations were able to make a profit mainly because the French and business government absorbed the production costs, and the airline was able to maintain a high ticket price. Only the rich had the privilege of travelling, as ticket prices were astronomical. For example, a trip from London to New York cost approximately $13,000, which is more than 30 times the regular ticket price today. So unless you had money to pay for the luxury of travelling halfway across the world in the shortest possible time, you never got to see the interior of these sleek aircraft. Despite the high speeds this aircraft flies at, it was considered the safest airline with zero deaths in its flying time. It made use of hybrid circuits, fully electrical controlled analogue flight control systems and super reliable autopilot systems that engaged in the event of emergency. It could also go on full autopilot mode from takeoff to landing without assistance. Nothing would go wrong. It also had a massive fuel tank due to its high fuel consumption, about 18,000 litres an hour. It used turbojet engines, what would you expect? As you would expect, anything moving at such a high speed would produce a lot of heat, so the pressurised cabin was fitted with high-functioning air conditioning units, while the cockpit had a visor that reflected most of the heat away. The hull was also made of aluminium, which did a good job of reflecting most of the heat away. Must have been very hot to touch. The fun part, the controller in the cockpit, was able to retract the visor and lower the nose of the aircraft to allow them to see clearly for landing. The bird was an absolute delight to look at and to fly. The Concorde captain John Hutchinson stated in an interview that the only thing that tells you that you're moving is that occasionally when you're flying over a subsonic airplane, you can see the 747s 20,000 feet below you, almost appearing to go backwards. I mean, you are going 800 miles an hour or thereabouts faster than they are. The airplane was an absolute delight to fly. It handled beautifully, and remember, we're talking about an airplane designed in the late 1950s to mid 1960s. I think it's absolutely amazing, and here we are, now in the 21st century, it remains unique. Sitting in this aircraft made you feel on top of the world. Maybe because you literally are on top of the world, and everything else lays at your feet. It must be nice. So, if there's so much praise for this single fleet aircraft, why exactly was it put out of commission? We will see that in a minute, stay tuned. Are you enjoying this video? Now would be the perfect time to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. If you have done that, let's get on. If you can guess the reason for the shutdown, you can also leave your predictions in the comment section below. What really happened to Concorde? Despite being the safest plane at the time, it just couldn't be perfect. Every now and then, something went wrong, which led to some minor disturbances, or in some cases, a major disturbance. 
During the period of its operation, the Concorde was involved in three accidents. The first two were non-fatal, but the third was the last straw. Let's have a look at how the accidents happened. First crash On April 12, 1989, a Concorde was involved in its first ever crash. It was a structural failure that occurred during a supersonic flight from New Zealand to Sydney. It was reported that during acceleration and takeoff, a thud was heard. But since the crew did not notice any handling problems or engine failure, it was taken trivially, as they assumed it was just a minor engine surge. No further difficulties or strange thuds were encountered throughout the flight, but upon descent, a strong vibration rippled through the craft for nearly two minutes. Must have been super scary. The cause of the vibration was the separation of the upper rudder from the rest of the craft. Fortunately, this didn't affect the handling and the airplane landed safely. Upon investigation, the United Kingdom's Air Accident Investigation Branch, AAIB, discovered that the skin of the rudder had gradually been separated from the rudder structure over a long period of time, way before the accident due to seepage of moisture between the skin and the rudder. It was also discovered that the production crew had not followed the proper procedure to avoid incidents like this. This was, however, understandable due to how difficult it was to adhere to those procedures. The aircraft was repaired and sent on its way. Second crash Barely three years after the first incident, on March 21st, 1992, another one occurred. This time, a little bit more severe than the previous one. During a flight from London to New York, a Concorde suffered yet another structural failure, quite similar to the first. It was cruising at twice the speed of sound, some 53,000 feet above sea level, when a noise was heard, and this time, it was a thump. This noise didn't disturb the controls or give any irregular readings or engine signs, so the crew, once again, suspected it was a minor engine surge and continued with the flight. Throughout the flight, there was no abnormalities in controls and engineering functions that suggested any problems. An hour later, as the landing was initiated, there was a sudden, severe vibration that shook the cabin for two long minutes, and it intensified when the second engine was engaged. But as power was reduced, the vibration also reduced. The crew had no other choice than to shut down the second engine and proceed to landing with just one engine. This was a bit challenging, and they were only able to land safely due to increased rudder control. Upon investigation, the AAIB concluded that some repair materials had seeped into the rudder structure, weakening the bond between the structure of the rudder and its skin as a result of some just concluded repairs. This led to the skin coming off during supersonic flight. The repair crew had not considered the effects of the repair material on the rudder, its skin and structure, which led to the incident. Once again, they were pardoned, because the magnitude of the repair was huge, which made it a difficult task. While all these were going on, no one saw the third accident coming. The third accident. On July 25th, 2000, a Concorde en route from New York City to Geonosis, France, was involved in a fatal accident that claimed 113 lives, and caused severe injuries to six other people. This was the only fatal accident Concorde has ever recorded, and it turned out to be the catalyst for the closing down of the airline company. At approximately 4.43pm on this fateful day, a Concorde registered to the French government filled with German tourists headed for a cruise ship in New York City. Began its takeoff from the Charles de Gaulle airport, but as it gathered speed, some observers noticed a fire under the left wing and quickly alerted the crew on board. But the plane had already taken off. One of the left engines failed, and about 90 seconds later, the second left engine failed. The aircraft lost power and the pilot was unable to climb higher than 200 feet. As a result, the plane fell from the sky and crashed into a hotel, killing everybody on board and four more people on the ground. Official investigations revealed that the entire disaster was caused by a metallic strip that punctured one of the four tyres. The metallic strip was a fragment of one of the engines of a Continental Airlines DC-10 that had taken off 
just before the Concorde. The debris from the punctured tyre hit the fuel tank, causing it to explode, which started the fire. This claim was however disputed by a key witness, a pilot who had landed on the adjacent runway. He stated that the fire started 1,000 metres from where the metallic strip was and that it had nothing to do with the crash. Further investigation revealed that the aircraft lacked some crucial parts, like a wheel spacer, and there was unbalanced weight distribution in the fuel tanks and the landing gear. They came to the conclusion that the aircraft had simply swerved off course, which made it fail to meet its required takeoff speed. However, John Hutchinson gave his thoughts saying, The fire on its own should have been eminently survivable. The pilot should have been able to fly his way out of trouble had it not been for the lethal combination of operation failure and negligence by the maintenance department of Air France that nobody wants to talk about. This led to a lot of changes and modifications, including puncture-proof tyres, but the company never remained the same. Three years later, the Concorde was shut down due to a reduction in customers, which meant the owners began to run huge losses. Now, that's one sad story, but we hope you enjoyed it anyway. Don't forget to leave a like and remember to subscribe to this channel for more amazing content like this. See you soon.